I just wanted to do a, another Cinema 4D R13 tutorial for you. Today it's going to be on the physical render. Um, you're probably thinking it's stereoscopic, but the reason I chose this project, it's got stereoscopic on it. Uh, the reason I chose this project is because um, it's um, it, w it works good with the uh, physical render, which some of the features I want to show you. But you don't have to. Well, I'll be teaching you how to do all this 3D kind of blue red thing in the next tutorial. Um, yeah, it's a really so yeah, physical render. Um, basically, it's a new thing in R13. Um, what it lets you do is it gives you better photorealism as you can kind of play around with the real camera settings, such as the let's go on it. Um, you can do the the shutter speed when you add a camera. You can play around with the focal length, the shutter speed, aperture, and all that stuff, um, which is like you actually real camera um, for those of you photographers out there. Um, so it kind of you can see the project um, as though you're actually creating it with a proper 3D lens depth, you know, with depth of field and motion blur. Um, it kind of implements depth of field, motion blur, GI, and all that stuff into this thing called the sampler. So instead of doing it, you know, render after render after render, like first it does the GI, then the depth of field, the motion blur, whatever order is, um, just puts it into one render for you. So it's much faster, better quality, all that stuff. Um, and then of course you can add blurry reflections, area shadows, and ambient occlusion. Um, you can add a ambient occlusion is right there. Um, I've, it's pretty simple to use. I've, I've done it in a tutorial before. You can just check that out. Um, so yeah, so you have this project here. Uh, usually, if you never opened R13 before, it'll start off render as standard, um, and then there's this one called physical, which is a new one. Um, in case you don't know how to get render settings, just click this button there, and this will pop up. Um, so yeah, go into your, and then it'll be there. So you want, then you want to click on the physical. Um, so under the option, you can see that there's a depth of field and motion blur. Um, you know, pretty simple depth of field. I did. A, I spent the whole tutorial on that earlier. Um, about I think September or July, something like that. I did a t tutorial on that in R12. Um, pretty simple. It's basically the same thing. It just en enables it here for your render. Motion blur, same thing for motion blur as depth of field. Um, basically just enables it. Um, yeah, and this thing I was talking about, samplers, where they all, all the options get... Um, combined into one. Um, the standard will be fixed, which is basically, you know, renders from the middle and like how it normally does in all other versions. Um, as you can see, it's a really nice quality model. Um, and it you'll, you'll notice that it takes a time to get the whole picture. You don't actually get to see how it looks on the outside, um, which is why there's one called progressive. What this does is that it renders the whole th whole picture, but not in full quality, and then it gradually gets better and better. So you don't have to render in full quality to see the whole a whole object. And you can see here it's doing the p progressive pass five now. And you c if you look at the reflections around on the side where it appears a bit grainy, you'll realize that as time goes past, they get better and better, and they eventually go as the quality gets better. Uh, here we're on past 10. Um, see, I think that's a really um, helpful thing. Uh, I've been actually been using it for a few projects I've been playing around with. Um, yeah. So, and you can see the, there's a bit of depth of field on the left bug, not much, very low. Um, yeah. Just for some reason, I zoomed out. Um, but yeah, um, and then 
and then when you got the adaptive one it just kind of lets you you personally choose the options um I, I i haven't actually used that yet because i think progress progressive and fixed do it for me um adaptive is just i guess if you're sorry um what i was saying is that if you're you know really in need of actually changing the options such as the subdivisions and threshold and all that stuff you can just do it there on adaptive and um, here you can actually control your sampler quality so if you put it on high and you can go fixed or progressive you know it just stays like that in the fixed you can actually control your subdivisions um, but on the adaptive you can control the um, minimum max and the threshold um, see so that's I think definitely one of the best features of R13 um, I think it's my favorite um, and most useful um, but the stereoscopic is probably which you'll see in the next tutorial is probably also my favorite but in terms of use I haven't actually used it much because you know I don't have any wa way of watching these 3D things I haven't actually bought any glasses yet so yeah but I might do I might get you know some cheap ones off uh, eBay or Amazon but and then yeah maybe I upload a project or something that's an idea um, yeah <laughs> anyway on with the tutorial um, then there's a thing called indirect illumination which is basically global illumination for your you know your uh, project um, it's much quicker than glo global illumination uh, I prefer it I use it instead um, but it's basically identical um, you can play around with these options here um, yeah so that's I guess that's it um, yeah um, also there's also these uh, focal lengths and sensor size and field of view and all that stuff uh, I'm not too good with cameras but just for you people who actually do cameras I thought I'd show you that um, and yeah this is like for the actual physical render this is are some advanced features so you can control f-stop uh, sensor size focal length um, and it really does affect your your uh, project kind of feel um, so yeah guess that's it um, hope you enjoyed